Today, I stand before the Maiden Tower, a symbol of Azerbaijan's rich history. According to legend, a young woman once leapt from its rooftop into the Caspian Sea below, at a time when waves still reached its base. Now, the sea has receded far into the distance, a stark reminder of a crisis that continues to unfold. Climate change and mismanagement accelerating the Caspian Sea's decline with potentially irreversible consequences for ecosystems, economies and regional stability. The Caspian Sea, the world's largest inland body of water, is in a state of steady retreat. Since 1995, its level has dropped by three meters, displacing coastlines by up to 50 kilometers in some areas. By 2023, the sea reached its lowest recorded level in three decades. Scientists warn that if current trends persist, the Caspian may soon surpass its previous record low of 29 meters below sea level, last observed in the late 1970s. A 2023 study in science found that 2,000 of the world's largest lakes have been losing 5.7 trillion gallons, 21.5 trillion liters of water annually since the early 1990s. The Caspian's decline is primarily driven by climate change, increased evaporation, and water diversion for agricultural and industrial use. But the broader impact extends far beyond environmental concerns. This is a crisis with geopolitical and economic ramifications. For the five nations bordering the Caspian, Azerbaijan, Russia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan and Iran, the stakes are immense. This sea has long been a lifeline for fisheries, energy industries and local economies but shrinking shorelines are now threatening vital infrastructure and biodiversity. In Kazakhstan, the shoreline near the village of Janbe has receded by over 20 kilometers in the last two decades, devastating fishing communities, oil extraction sites, and maritime transport routes. The disappearance of water has jeopardized sturgeon populations, a species that has long supported Kazakhstan's caviar industry. Meanwhile, shrinking coastlines have destabilized oil platforms and drilling infrastructure, with growing concerns over long-term energy security. The Caspian's fate draws parallels with the Aral Sea disaster. Once the world's fourth largest lake, the Aral was effectively destroyed by Soviet-era water mismanagement, leaving behind an ecological wasteland. Entire economies collapsed, biodiversity was wiped out, and health crises followed. While the Caspian scale and hydrography make its decline slower and more complex, the warning signs are clear. Without intervention, the region faces a similar fate. The Caspian's decline is largely driven by climate change and rising evaporation. However, another key factor is reduced inflows from its main tributary, the Volga River. Hydraulic regulation and unchecked water extraction have worsened the crisis. Regardless of whether this trend is part of a long-term cycle or a direct result of human activity, we are already witnessing the consequences. The challenge now is mitigation, not just observation. We also observe that uh, Kazakhstan and in the future Azerbaijan is also planning to do desalination. Desalination means using the Caspian Sea water uh, and making it clean for the internal usage and the demand, which also means Caspian Sea countries uh, using the seawater to clean it and use it their own water use uh, demand. And when we look at the environmental issue, we can see here the oil gas exploration also affect the environmental issues and technological uh, developments is necessary and the more strict environmental uh, restrictions and control is necessary to check uh, this process. 
And uh, finally, there is a new trend uh, this year. It's called the green hydrogen. Kazakhstan is planning to do a green hydrogen in the future. Other Caspian states also uh, express their uh, interest for the green hydrogen. Uh, and green hydrogen production requires a lot of water. And this water might come from the Caspian Sea itself, and it can put extra pressure for the Caspian Sea. Despite signing the Caspian Sea Convention in 2018, fragmented policies and competing national interests have slowed progress. Experts stress that stronger transboundary agreements, investment in sustainable infrastructure, and early warning systems are essential to slowing and potentially reversing the decline. The Tehran Convention provides a legal framework for protecting the Caspian's environment, yet many of its provisions remain largely symbolic. Stronger enforcement and initiatives such as the Caspian Sea Green Standard could improve conservation efforts, but progress has been slow. The Caspian Sea crisis extends beyond regional borders, posing risks to climate stability, biodiversity, and global ecological health. Platforms like COP29 in Baku and UAE Sustainability Week serve as vital opportunities to raise awareness, secure investment in conservation projects, and push for stronger environmental policies. At COP29, UNEP Executive Director Inger Andersen highlighted the urgency of the crisis, warning that the Caspian's continued decline threatens livelihoods, food security, and regional stability. Building on the momentum of recent high-level discussions, including the meeting on Caspian seawater decline in light of climate change, her remarks reinforced the need for collective action to address this. Growing environmental challenge we at UNEP are proud to be the interim host for the Caspian Sea um, uh, Convention, which is called the Tehran Convention. Um, it has been in existence for 20 years, and it's a critical instrument by which these countries work together. In conclusion, we're grateful for the leadership that these five states have shown, and today having the declaration agreed is a major moment and a major stepping stone. The Aral Sea disaster stands as a cautionary tale an ecological catastrophe that unfolded in plain sight. The Caspian's decline is not yet irreversible, but inaction will ensure a slow-motion disaster that devastates not just the environment, but the economies and political stability of an entire region. The Caspian's fate is still in human hands, but for how much longer?